Apache is a tried and true piece of software that has stood the test of time and its install base is huge. You can find it on all kinds of Linux and Unix servers alike. It's a great piece of software, so I guess it makes sense that it's so common. And of course, you can utilize it on the Linode platform. And in today's video, I am going to show you some examples of not only configuring Apache 2, but also installing modules as well. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for this tutorial, I've already gone ahead and created a Linode that I've cleverly named Apache Tutorial. This particular Linode is running Ubuntu 20.04, as you can see here. And it's actually ready to go. We have the IP address right here. And if I copy this and then paste it over here into this new tab, you'll see that nothing will happen. Why? Because it's a fresh Linode and Apache has yet to be installed. If I go down here to the terminal, I can connect to that Linode via SSH. It's a fresh Linode, so all we have at the moment is the root user. I'll paste in the IP address right here. And there we go. Now, before we get started, there's a few things that we should do, a little bit of housekeeping, if you will. First of all, we should run apt update to make sure that our package index is completely up to date. And I didn't need to use sudo because I am logged in as root. And right here, it's telling me that 67 packages can be upgraded. So we'll definitely want to take care of that right now. So I'm going to run apt and then dist hyphen upgrade, which will install all of the updates that were found by the apt update command. Press enter. And this might take a moment, so I'll press enter and then I'll be right back as soon as this is finished. All right, so all of the updates have been installed, so we should be able to continue along. And the next thing that I recommend that you do is update the host name because right now the server is called localhost, which isn't very descriptive, is it? So we want to give this server a name that'll match its purpose. And there's a few files that we will want to edit. So we could use nano or whatever your text editor of choice happens to be. And the first file we will edit is Etsy hostname. And as you can see, it is currently set to localhost, just like it showed in the command prompt. And then right here, you can give your Linode a descriptive name. If you have a domain name, for example, you can go ahead and type that right here for the name of the server. But you don't actually have to have a domain name for this example. You can call the server whatever you like. What I'm going to do on my end is give this Linode a name that matches its actual name on the dashboard. So I will call it Apache hyphen tutorial. I think that's good enough. So if you aren't already familiar with nano, you can hold control and press O to save the file and then enter and then control X to exit out. The second file that we will need to edit is Etsy hosts. And what we can do right here is add a new line. I'll just do 127.0.1.1 and then tab over and give it the same name here that you gave it in the Etsy hostname file. So in my case, I will add Apache tutorial right here, just like I did in the original file, and we'll save it and exit out. Now at this point, I recommend that we reboot the server because not only did we give it a new name, we also installed all of the updates as well. So here we can go ahead and just drop this down and click on reboot. And then back here on the terminal, I should be disconnected any moment. And my connection was dropped, so it is rebooting. And I'll just give it a moment to go ahead and reboot. And as soon as it comes back up, then I will connect and we will continue. So let's see if enough time has passed. And it looks like it has. And there we go. Server is back up and running. As you can see, it's been up for zero minutes, so it just started up. And we also see the host name right here, which in my opinion looks a heck of a lot better than simply showing localhost. 
So now that we have all of that set up, we can go ahead and continue. So let's go ahead and get Apache installed. After all, we can't learn how to configure Apache if it's not even present on our Linode. So to do that, we will run apt install Apache 2, Apache 2 doc, and also Apache 2 hyphen utils. And then we'll press enter. And I'll accept all the defaults. I'll press enter again. And that was pretty quick. So we could check the status of Apache just to make sure that it's running and it's healthy by running systemctl status Apache 2 and then enter. We can see right here that it is active and running. It's also enabled. And what this means is that when this Linode starts up, Apache 2 itself will automatically start as well so you don't have to go in and manually start this every time you reboot the server. Now if for some reason it shows disabled instead of enabled, which is extremely rare, you could run systemctl enable Apache 2 just like that. I'm not going to do that because, well, it's already enabled. If it wasn't running, then you could do systemctl start Apache 2 to actually start the process. If for some reason you need to restart the Apache 2 process, then you could do so by changing that keyword to restart. But the problem with that is that will also disrupt anybody who is trying to access your web server. It'll actually drop all of your users. So sometimes it's better to reload if you can. But anyway, it's running, so we shouldn't need to do anything. Back up here in my browser, if I go back to this tab right here, Previously, I tried to enter the IP address here just to show you that it wasn't working because, well, Apache wasn't installed. So I'm going to remove this part right here because this isn't actually HTTPS. I should be able to press enter here. And sure enough, we see the default Apache 2 web page right here. And this is accessible from anywhere in the world with internet access at this point. We now have a publicly accessible Apache installation ready to go. But how do we configure it? Well, let's take a look at some examples and I will show you. Now to configure Apache, there are several modules that can be installed that will extend its functionality. Now which modules you'll need to install all depend on what you want to host with Apache. If all you want to do is host a single static web page, you don't need anything else. You already have everything you need. You saw the default Apache page, you could just replace that with your static page and then you'd be all set and ready to go. There'd be nothing else for you to do. Some applications that you can run that can be hosted via Apache, for example, Nextcloud, WordPress, and so on. They each have their own requirements and their documentation will tell you exactly which modules you will need to have installed. So what I'm going to do now is give you some example modules that might be some that you'll need and I'll show you how to install those. Now one thing that we can do to get a list of some of the modules that are available is we can run apt search and then lib apache2 hyphen mod short for module. I'll press enter. And there's some here that aren't related but if we scroll up we get all of these packages that start with lib apache2 hyphen mod hyphen and then something at the end. And usually you can glean from the name what exactly it does. So for example, we have lib apache2 mod python. So installing that will actually add scripting support for python. Once you've found a module that you want to have installed, then all you have to do is install the package for it, which is as simple as apt install and then lib apache2 hyphen mod hyphen and then whatever it was. So for example, if I wanted to add Python support, I could just simply type this package name right here and press enter. And then enter again. And that will give us Python support. Another popular example is I could change Python to Perl 2 if we want to have Perl support. And easy enough, I'm just simply installing yet another package. Now when it comes to Ubuntu at least, there's a very specific way 
where you can enable or disable modules because just having it installed isn't generally enough, although Ubuntu does try to automatically enable any Apache modules that you have installed. So you just saw me install support for Perl and Python. So those should both be enabled by default. Other distributions are a bit different. Make sure you check the documentation. But the Ubuntu specific command for enabling a module after you install it is a2nmod, just like that. So I'll press enter. And it actually gives us a choice of which modules we want to enable. Now notice, I didn't install all of these. I only installed the Perl and Python module. But there's a lot more here that we can actually enable. So if there's something here that your website technology requires, then you can use A2 in mod to enable that particular module. You could type the name of the module after the A2 and mod command. You don't actually have to look at the entire list if you already know the name of the module you want to enable. And we can also see that Python is on this list, so I'll just go ahead and type that. And it's telling me that that particular module was already enabled. So just because you see it in this list when you go to use the a 2 nmod command, it doesn't mean that it's not enabled. It's actually just showing you a list of all the modules that you have installed. If you want to disable one, it's actually pretty easy. You could do a 2 dismod for that, and I'll press enter here. And here we actually are getting a list of modules that are enabled, and you can see that both Perl and Python are on this list. So if I didn't actually need Perl like I thought I did, I could remove the package, or I could actually just use a 2 dismod to disable that module. So I'll press Enter. And then it tells me that the module is disabled, but it also tells me in order to finish disabling that particular module, I'm going to need to restart Apache 2, so just keep that in mind. A simple reload of Apache 2 won't really cut it. A reload is a lot more graceful than a restart, but at least you'll know that you actually do need to restart in order for that to take effect. If I wanted to re-enable it, I could do A2 and mod just like before, but I can actually give it the name of the module right here without looking at the entire list. And now it's telling me that Perl is now enabled, but again, it's also telling me that I need to restart Apache 2 for the changes to take effect. Now Apache is actually able to host more than one website on the same server. And in order to facilitate that, there's a feature called name-based virtual hosts. And to facilitate that, Ubuntu has two commands that are specific to that distribution, a2 and site, as well as a2 dis site. As you could probably guess, a 2 site enables a site, and a 2 dis site disables a site. But how do you even know which sites are even installed on your web server so that you know what you can and can't enable or disable? So if you have a look at the Etsy Apache 2 sites available directory, you can see all of the config files that you have available right there, and we get these two by default. We have the default one, on the left and we have the default SSL version on the right. So what we can actually do is a2 dis site and let's disable one of the default config files. So now it's telling me that that particular site is disabled so to finalize that it also wants me to run systemctl reload apache2. So it actually tells you whether you need to reload or restart based on the nature of the change which is pretty helpful. So I'll press enter. So now we have that site disabled. And the reason why I've disabled it is because I'm going to show you how to create a new one or a custom one. So for that, we're going to run nano Etsy Apache 2 sites available. And then example.net.conf and then enter. And then here I've pasted in the config for the example.net website. And just to go through this real quick, the virtual host is listening for connections on port 80, which is the default. We have the server admin, which is the individual that is responsible for this particular website. And then we have an email address for that individual. We then give the server a name, and we're going to call it example.net. Then we also have server alias, which is the same as the server name, but it has the www at the beginning. 
And the reason why we're doing that is because we don't know if the user is going to type example.net or www.example.net. We want to make sure that regardless of which of those two URLs the user types, they are directed to the appropriate website, which is why we have two entries for the domain. We also have the document root right here, which is pointing us to this directory. It doesn't exist yet, but we will be creating that shortly. And then for the error log and the custom log, we are pointing those to files that are in a custom directory. And the directory for these, that doesn't exist either, but we will be creating that shortly. So it's pretty straightforward. So I'll go ahead and save the file. Then I'll exit out. So now what I'm going to do is create another virtual host file to illustrate the fact that you can have more than one website hosted on the same web server. So this is the command that we used to edit the original virtual host file. And I'm going to change this to example.org. And again, I'm going to paste in the code for this example right here. It's essentially the same as the previous one, except instead of example.net, it says example.org. So that's pretty straightforward. And another thing that I want to show you as well, hypothetically, if we wanted to enable scripting support for, say, Perl, we did install that package earlier. There's a few more lines of configuration that we can actually add to this file. And what I will do is paste that in right here. And I like to keep everything neat, so I'm going to make sure that everything is lined up. And now we have a few lines of configuration here that will enable Perl. Now, I'm not going to actually show you a Perl example, but I did want to show you an example of adding additional lines of configuration that would be required to fully enable a scripting language such as Perl. Other scripting languages will have different lines of code that you might need to add. This is just an example. But anyway, I'll save the file and then exit out. Now one problem with those virtual host files though is that the directory that the document root references the directory doesn't exist for either of those virtual hosts, so we will need to go ahead and create that. And as you see here, we are simply making a new directory, the dash p option, make sure that all the parent directories are created as well if they don't already exist. And in this case, we are adding the directory for the document root for the example.net website. And then similarly, we also need to create the directory to store the log files as well. That's another directory that was mentioned in the host config file. And then we need to do the same thing for the example.org website as well. And now we should have the directories for each of the document routes as well as the log directories. So now that we have added two config files for two websites, we will need to actually enable those websites, otherwise we will never get traffic and no one will be able to access them. As mentioned earlier, we have the a2n site command that facilitates that. And then you type the name of the website that you want to enable. So for example, example.net. And it's telling me that it did indeed enable that site. I'll need to reload Apache 2 for that to be finalized. And I should also enable the second virtual host as well. So now we have two websites that are being hosted on this server. Now if you want to actually receive traffic on the web server, the domain name will need to exist, and the A record will need to point to this web server in order for this to work. But you can change example.net and example.org to whatever your domain names happen to be, update DNS, and after DNS propagates, you should be good to go. But anyway, I'll just run systemctl, Reload Apache 2 to make sure that everything is properly enabled. And, well, that was pretty easy. Now, those are some simple examples of name-based virtual hosts. Obviously, you will need to have some sort of website files installed in the directories that we've created. So, for example, you could copy the default website file for the Apache default web page into those directories as a test. But it's beyond the scope of this particular video because example.net and example.org are hypothetical websites. The point was to show you how to actually set that up and well I've done that. But there's other examples in the documentation that this video is based on if you want to see even more examples of how to configure Apache.
So if you want to learn more, definitely check out that article. When it comes to Apache, there's no shortage of different ways that you can customize it as well as modules that you can install to extend it even further. So we've only begun to scratch the surface in today's video, but I hope it was helpful. As always, click that like button if you like this video because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more Linux content just like this. And make sure you also hit that subscribe button because we have some awesome content coming very soon. So thanks for watching.